Hey everybody, so Heidi here in collaboration with Bombsheller. You don't know about Bombsheller, it's a badass site where you can design and sell custom leggings. Everything is printed, cut, and sewn, made to order, and really gives you some awesome opportunities to show off your design skills and not have to spend a dime. In the meantime, you can earn money every time someone buys a pair of your leggings. Pretty cool setup if you ask me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a quick tutorial here on working with raster images meaning starting with a photograph converting that to vector and then manipulating the colors within illustrator and i will get started with this photo up here i took on the upper left so this is the original photo i took this photo on my drive home from the beach this summer i love the the contrast between the linear lines of the bridge and the sky but if i zoom into 150 percent which is what Bombsheller recommends to ensure that the resolution matches their standards in terms of pixelated imagery, etc. You can see it doesn't look amazing. It's not terrible, but I'm not really happy with the resolution. It was taken on my iPhone and it's not the best photo in terms of the quality of resolution. So I prefer to work in vector in this instance, and I'm also a vector junkie, so it works out really well for me to convert this to vector and play around with it in Illustrator as opposed to Photoshop. What I did is I applied the image trace feature to this photograph, and I'm not going to go through that because there are plenty of tutorials online that show you how to do image trace um, or live trace if you're in an earlier version of Illustrator and it's a pretty user-friendly feature that you just have to play around with a bunch of settings until you get the result that you want but once you've image traced your artwork you're going to want to expand it so this is the image trace result and from there you do have to actually expand it so my expanded result is down here you can see it is actually all these vector paths and anchor points so once you have the image trace result to where it looks like something that you want you'll come up to object image trace and choose expand okay now once you've got it expanded this is expanded this is where you can really start to have fun with it and edit the colors so this is the original photo it's this really nice sort of blue skyline but I didn't really think it was that great of a color palette for a pair of leggings so I wanted to play with that and that's what I'm going to show you how to do in this tutorial so I'll zoom out as you can see I created this really nice fuchsia lime and dark navy palette I did have to manipulate some of the lines of the bridge the bridge uh, ropes I guess I'm not really sure what they're called here but those if I left them naturally would have run right into the butt seam and that would not be very flattering so I instead curved this up and it runs right up the side of the thigh kind of creates a sexy look so that was some couple edits that I did make to the artwork um, just that was really just pushing around anchor points and manipulating the paths and the curves it was a little bit of a tedious process but I think it came out really nice so let's play around with the color I'm going to take this image here and we'll just play around with the original image and then we'll mess with it on the legging so make a copy here quick way to make a copy is either hold option or alt on your keyboard while you drag and that automatically creates a copy of your artwork I'll zoom in on that a little bit and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this amazing feature called recolor artwork also known as live color you can come up to edit edit colors recolor artwork it's not a feature a lot of people know about in Illustrator but it's really really powerful so if you're in Illustrator CC 2015 the colors when you launch this will automatically be recolored based on some recent action that you made I don't really like this new feature they just released um, in earlier versions all the colors will be loaded to the original colors so to get these back you can click on the eyedropper up here in the right corner and you'll notice we're back to the original color so if you're in CC 2014 or earlier yours will load looking like this but if it loads launching all these random colors in here click the eyedropper to get back to the original colors now just a quick overview of what we see in here on the left hand side are the current colors that exist in your artwork on the right hand side are the new colors that you want to change that to so we've got quite a few colors here but nothing too cumbersome let's take a look at how we actually manage the colors in here it can be a little bit hard to tell what colors what when we have these nice gradients happening so we've got this option in here which looks like a little magnifying glass I'm going to click on that and then as I click through here it starts to show me where each of these colors exist in the artwork so let's just work with this top 
dark blue one here. So I'll turn this back off so I can actually see. And I'll double click on that. And it launches my color picker where I can randomly choose a color. So we'll just choose anything, just this green. And you can see it changes everything that was that mid blue color to that green. If I don't want that to happen or I want to sort of erase that and change it back, I can simply drag the color from the left over to the right. Now alternatively, I can swap color positions within this interface. So if I want to swap this color and this color, I can drag these two and it will swap them in the artwork. So I can drag from left to right to override colors if I want to sort of start merging colors together or I can drag on the right side to start swapping colors. So that's kind of a basic overview of the interface right here but what I really want to focus on is the edit option within this interface. So I'll click on edit up here and it launches this color wheel. So the color wheel allows us to individually move colors around and we can create all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, that might not be exactly what you want. It's a little bit tedious. It's hard to keep light colors locked together. So again, I'm going to click this eyedropper up here to get back to the original color palette. What I want to do is I want to click this link harmony colors icon. Looks like a chain. So I link the harmony colors and then the color I actually want to work with is the color that has the large circle around it. That's called your base color. And the reason I want to work with this color is because as I move this, it locks all the colors together, meaning everything moves together. So the saturation of everything grows or decreases together. As I move colors around the color wheel, they sort of stay locked together, so on and so forth. If I don't drag the large circle, the colors stay locked together as I drag around the circle but they don't stay locked as I drag in and out. So I can manipulate individual color saturations, but if I want them to all stay locked together, I want to drag the large circle, also known as the base color. So as I start dragging this around, I get some really, really cool color options within my artwork. So once you get a color option that looks great, again, you can just click OK, zoom out, you can make another copy again, hold the option or alt key while you click and drag and go ahead and make another colorway until you start getting a result that you like. So I'm going to move these over here and we'll play with it one, whoops, these uh, images are quite large so I'm running out of room on the, okay, yep, I'll move these up here. There we go, we have a little bit more space up there. Now I'll zoom in and I'm going to take all the artwork that I have on my leggings and you notice I've got a couple different blocks. Um, I've got these blocks down here which sort of fill in the bottom that I wanted to run into this dark navy color. I've got this fuchsia color that fills in the background. And then I've got each of these as the image that is the bridge artwork. And the reason it just looks like blocks of colors, so I've created clipping masks around them to sort of mask out these edges. Otherwise the photo ran onto the other side of the legging. So I'll take this Oops. I'll take everything in here and I'll just copy, make a copy down here and I can play with the artwork on my leggings to get an additional color. So I can again come up to edit, edit colors, recolor artwork, or I can just come over to this color wheel on my control bar up here and that also launches the interface. Again, depending on your version, the colors may automatically be recolored. If you want to get back to the starting point, click on the eyedropper here and we'll come into the edit panel and click on the link chain here and I'm going to drag this large base color around. really a lot of fun things to do in here. So that's a really, really nice colorway there. The turquoise with the orange in the background, a little bit more of a realistic photo perhaps or representation of the skyline. Um, you know, that's a really pretty one with the green. So the sky is really the limit, no pun intended on the legging design, sincerely. But play around with this option to edit your colors within Illustrator. It gives you unlimited ability to 
manipulate each individual color and you're also working with vector artwork which just gives a different look and feel to the design again it can help solve problems if the resolution of your image is not sufficient enough and at the end of the day um, allows you to create some really really cool designs and colorway options for your leggings so again if you haven't checked out bombsheller.com I really suggest you get there it costs absolutely nothing you can design your leggings upload them spend zero dollars and send them out to your friends and people can buy just one pair and they'll get cut sewn printed cut and sewn and made and shipped out and there's no minimums like any Kickstarter campaigns or anything like that. Genuinely one-off awesome kick-ass leggings that you designed and now are going to be rocking around town in. All right, thanks guys. This was so Heidi. I'll see you next time. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial.